Hello my dear friends, I am Deepesh. Today I would like to show you image classification of a medical image processing use case where I will use the data provided by Lapirananta University of Technology or LUT and they have a very interesting project they have a project which is named image rnet and they have a database that we can download which contains a lot of images related to a disease which is called diabetic retinopathy now diabetic retinopathy is a disease of the eye which happens to people who are uh, infected with diabetes and uh, they have a problem in their vision system so I would like to do a classification of those images for that I have downloaded the image files from this link so all the credits go to the image rnet project for this the images are very nice and the we can use tensorflow to do the classification on these images so I have downloaded the images and if you look at those images these are the kind of images that are visible see this is an infected retina you can see that these are the spots these are the spots and some hemorrhages that are visible whereas in case of a normal retina you don't see those spots the retina is more or less clear now we like to have a tensorflow learn which is an infected retina and which is a normal retina and generate the model I have used the same technique that I have used in the previous videos to generate the model and right now I am using Django to host the program and I am using GUnicorn to uh, transfer the control from Django to the uh, web host I am using Unicorn because Unicorn uses WSGI and WSGI is the standard way to serve Python applications as you know that web server cannot uh, cannot uh, execute Python applications directly and they use this interface called WSGI so WSGI will do a, a, a call to the web application framework and that will be used to execute the Python program so if you see that uh, I have Django installed and I have GUnicorn installed as well so in my Django views dot pi program I have used a function to execute my tensorflow program in the tensorflow program I have the got the levels and the graph that I have generated by training those two classes of images I am obtaining the image through a post and the image is read from the post and then it is saved in a path and after we save into a path we will be reading the URL the complete URL and then inputting it into tensorflow and then we will do the prediction after we get the prediction we will do we will save the prediction into a list 
and in the list we will do a max so the max will actually find the probability which is maximum between the two classes or any number of classes that are there and it will find the one which is of the highest probability it will find the class which has the highest probability and it will send it back as a result so let's start the unicorn server you see it has started already let's go okay so we have got the web page in the web page we can browse okay let me browse uh, a normal retina for example and let's see whether it can predict it properly so this is in the folder normal retina let's open it and try to upload it okay you can see that it's uploaded and it's now running the tensorflow project and the program is running and yes it has already classified it and you can see that the result has come back on the screen showing a 0.91 probability which is around 92 percent probability that it's a normal retina we can do a similar case with the infector retina and see whether it can classify it okay let's see okay you can see that the performance is quite slow because I'm using a CPU now in a case of a real uh, okay now it is uh, it is showing that it's an infected so it is able to classify an infected and a normal retina successfully which is quite good which shows the robustness of the TensorFlow model and uh, one thing to note is that the performance is a bit slow and I should be able to get the result faster now I will show you another case here we are able to handle uh, okay we'll be able to handle multiple requests so let's see we'll try to upload two files one from the normal and another one from the infected one and we'll try to run both of them and let's see what happens okay let's try to upload both so we are simulating like two users who are accessing the website at the same point of time and let's see how it how it you, you can see that it's already frozen it's it's, it's a bit slow but <clears throat> let's see what happens okay so we can see that the response has come back and we can see that both of these images have been classified correctly so it shows that it can handle multiple requests and it can serve many users at the same time now, thank you very much for watching the video i hope you liked it and you can see that tensorflow can be applied to medical research and now we can have an automated doctor who can do our prediction of an image by using a web service so i hope you like the video and stay tuned for the more exciting videos like this thank you very much bye bye